I finished Stephen King's Pet Cemetery book and oof, man. Uh, I will have to say, first off, this is still my favorite Stephen King book. Uh, it's definitely got the five star from me. It is fantastic in so many ways. There's like hardly any way I can des describe the feelings you get from reading this book. All right, so it is about a family, a mom, a dad, a little girl who is five, because she's going to kindergarten, and then um, a little boy who just turned two. And they move to like pretty much a farm life or, you know, out in the country somewhere. The Lewis, Lewis Creed, is the father, and he is, works at, he's a doctor who works at a university. So he's got this new job, and so they're moving for his job, and they, like, pretty much get this farmhouse, and everything is picture perfect. And then things aren't. Stephen King, without doing spoilers, Stephen King does a wonderful job uh, in, in this book about grief. And... It's more, it's not so much, there is like frightening things that happen in this book. I mean, it's, it is rightfully so a horror book, but it's more the fear of losing a loved one more so than anything else that, um, really pu punch it, like punches you in the gut kind of feeling with this, with this story. Uh, I remember reading this when I was a teenager. I don't, remember too much but I do remember the feelings of like um the terrifying spots like I said it I mean it is horror it's not just like oh well it's so sad because there's you know loss of loved ones or anything like that um it, it's the grief is there don't get me wrong but there is horror moments in this book and I don't like I said I'm not like it's been a while but teenage me I do remember it like me be more terrified of the like terrified moments the uh creepy stuff more so than the actual grief the the grief didn't affect me the way it did this go around when i read it um the grief and the the grounded stuff the stuff that's like you know really grounded in real life scenarios that stuff affected me a whole lot more this go around than it did last time i can't i don't know what else i can say that's not a spoiler but I mean it's so it's so good he does such a wonderful job in this book from the get-go like the very very beginning of the book like you know misery I told you was like really iffy the first hundred pages and then it gets really good really fast and that's not the case with this one from the very get-go I loved the family like immediately there was no like um me being bored or me wanting more from the book or the story like it was more the fact that um i enjoyed the interactions that the father had it's from the mainly it's mainly from the father's point of view his like relationship with his wife and his kids like you get to see that and they're very strong and very um grounded and it's, you can tell when the four of them are together that it's like, you know, they have each other's backs and they're, they're there for each other. And, you know, that is all great. And there's like little scenes in the very, very beginning that I've already, I mean, I immediately marked. Uh, like, um, they first get there, that, that's how they, the story starts is them actually, you know, seeing their house for the first time and they're moving and all that stuff. And so as soon as they get there, they have two kids. So everything goes chaotic, of course. And um, they're looking around the yard and the Ellie is the daughter. She um, gets hurt in um, some way. And then Gage, who is the son, gets stung by a bee and just everyone is crying and stressed out. And the mom is not doing so well. And because she didn't even, you know, the, the move was not her idea. So she was very happy where she was. It's not like she's pissed that they're going to this new place or anything. She's just not, you know, she's not in like focused mom. I can handle this mode at the moment. And so he's like, like everyone's going nuts around him. She, the wife's wanting him to like take care of everything all at once. Cause you know, he's a doctor and his, you know, almost two year old got stung by a bee and Ellen got scraped her knee and it's just all at once. And he's like going crazy. And he says, I'm going crazy. Wee! 
And I laughed out loud at that moment, and so I, like, marked that. And that's, like, in the very beginning of the book, like, when we're six pages in. With this new annotating, I'm very picky on what I'm marking, and so the fact that I marked that, you know, I just I thought that was really funny and kind of silly. You know, like, he's, like, in his own head thinking, and so he's like, I'm going crazy, which I've done multiple times. And and he's just like, whee! Like, I could just picture myself saying that. So there's, that's all pretty much I can go through. There's a few times, like, okay, so obviously Pet cemetery, right? Like, there's a Pet cemetery that um, is pretty much on their property uh, that's, like, a walking distance for them. So the neighbor, Judd, has been there since, like, <laughs> since his built house was built pretty much uh he was born in the house that he's living in at now so he knows the town inside and out and so he pretty much as soon as he meets these people he talks about the um pet cemetery <laughs> like immediately almost like he's like the kids really like to take care of this place and make sure that you know the path is clear and all this stuff. like he's telling them about this and so i was like well, okay that's an interesting thing to chat about right away. Like we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Pet Cemetery. That's, and the thing I thought was kind of weird was like, it was like nothing to these people to discuss the Pet Cemetery with their five-year-old. And like, like it was almost like, this is the, <laughs> this is the uh, town's um, like attraction almost, you know, <laughs> like, let me, let me tell you about the Pet Cemetery and I'll show you when you get time. And and sure enough, he takes them to the pet cemetery and shows it off like it's a freaking attraction that everyone wants to see, you know, like you definitely want to know about this. And he talks about how kids like take care of the cemetery, like since, even since he was, you know, a kid, they took care of it. And I'm like, did I just not have the same like growing up as everyone else? Like, I don't remember. Uh, well, first off, I don't. I don't, I've never been to a pet cemetery. And secondly, uh, I don't think as a kid, I would really want to take care of a pet cemetery either. Like he didn't mention anything about like parents taking care of it. The kids knew where it was and wanted to go. And like, it was almost like a hangout spot. I thought that was weird. <laughs> I was just like, okay, sure. Let's, let's take our five year old. Let's go for a hike and let's go look at this new pet cemetery. Woohoo! This will be fun. <laughs> She's like a little weirded out by that. <laughs> and they sure enough, they take and they have a um, the family has a pet, a pet cat, obviously, by the name of Church. Uh, you know, immediately right after the pet cemetery, Ellie, the, you know, the little five year old is worried that her cat's going to die and is extremely strung out by it. Well, yeah, of course she is. <laughs> you took her to a pet cemetery. Like what is happening? I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not. I just know that uh, I thought it was weird that it wasn't even a hesitation for Lewis to uh, go with Judd to this pet cemetery to look at it and like, no big deal. Let's all go as a family, make it a family trip. And sure enough, that's what they do. Like they all hike. They even take the little two-year-old on a little pack. And uh, anyway, so the we're going to go a little bit into spoilers real quick. Um, I haven't watched the movie again, but uh, when I read the book when I was a teenager, that's when I watched the movie. So I'm sure there'll be a new experience for me as well. Um, I know there was a new one that came out in like 2019 or something like that. Uh, a Pet Cemetery version, a new version, and I'm not going to watch that. I did a little research, and so now that we're in spoilers, uh, in the book, and in, I know for a fact in the other movie, again, spoilers, so the reason I was talking about grief was because the two-year-old, the little Gage is his name, he he dies, tragically, obviously, he's a two-year-old. Uh, he There's this big, long strip of road, and it's really, 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 really busy, like with semi-trucks constantly speeding through there, like ridiculously fast. And unfortunately, Gage gets in the road and he gets hit, okay? So that happens in the book and it happens in the original movie that came out. It was like 1983, 84 or something around those lines. The 80, 1980s version go, pretty much follows the book exactly. I do remember that. Uh, I don't remember too much about anything about the actors or like what they kept out or what they kept in or any of that stuff. I do know that they, they follow the main storyline, which Gage, Gage um, dies. 
Well, when you watch when I watched the preview of the 2019 version, it's very obvious that Ellie, the 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 kindergartner, is the one that dies. That she gets in the road and she dies. Um, I think they did that because they had a, um, and not only that, but I think in the in the movie, I, I mean, I can't be positive because like I haven't watched it. I've only watched. I literally watched previews. And read a few like comments on those previews, but I'm pretty sure that Ellie's supposed to be a little bit older in the movie, the new movie, and so they use like a nine year old. And the whole pur purpose and reasoning for this was they were trying to get a better um, horror acting, and you can't get much acting from a two year old or a three uh, any toddler. You can't get much of an acting, especially when it comes to horror. But in the book, um, Gage definitely is the one that passes. It's it's very obviously hard hitting. And obviously the husband and the wife and the daughter are all very traumatized by it. They were all there when it happened. And it's sad. And the thing that I marked, there was a spot in here that I marked and it kind of annoyed me because the, the boy, little boy dies, right? He's passed away and they are like doing all the funeral stuff. Um, which they do like a, almost like a viewing or something like that. And then they actually do the burial a different day. The mother is breaking down and she can't handle it and she's losing control. And the husband is like, everyone's looking at him like he's supposed to be able to just buck up and take care of her. Take care of your wife. <laughs> Does he not get to grief? <laughs> is that not like a thing? It annoyed me because it, ha it happened multiple times. And I, um, I understand that, you know, like this was written a little farther back. And so maybe it was like, okay to expect a man to be a man, which doesn't make any sense to me, but what have you anyway. So like that, I marked that a couple of times. Cause it kind of was just like, they ex immediately when she breaks down in tears and loses control, the wife, which I get that. I mean, I would probably be exactly the same way. But the person who I would not expect to console me right away actually wouldn't be my husband because I would expect him to be right there along with me, bawling his eyes out. <laughs> so, the, but everyone else around, and this might be, like I said, it's from Lewis Creed's The Father's point of view. So maybe he just felt like everyone was expecting him to take care of his grieving wife, but... He didn't know how because he wanted to grieve as well. And it almost like felt like he couldn't. And I agree with that. Like, why, why couldn't he? Like, and then, and then at one point in time in the book, even she was, um, Rachel is her name. She ended up um, grieving with her mother. And her mother was the, her mother, Rachel's mother, was the one that was consoling her. And he said again, it almost felt like people were like, well, why was it the mother? Why wasn't the husband taking care of her? And I felt like that's the way it should have been. Because I feel like, if anything, if anything in the aspect of them together, it should have been them both like bawling on each other, holding each other. That would have been a more equal situation. But instead it felt like he felt like everyone expected him to just stay strong and can take care of his grieving wife. Now the one thing I did agree with was later down the road, uh, everyone was pretty much ignoring the crap that Ellie was still there. Ellie's still alive. You still have a daughter. And they've even mentioned that. Like, you still have another child that that needs you and w wants you and loves you and, you know, is also grieving. And it was almost like she was pushed aside because, uh, I mean, yes, there's grief and everything in, this, in the sun. It was almost, and it was, it seemed like Lewis was more acting like he didn't have a daughter anymore. Like he lost his entire family at one, like in his head, the way he was thinking, it was obviously like he was losing his mind, but I did agree with that scenario where it was like, look, you still have a daughter. You need to take care of her. You need to re realize that you still have a child. I think when I read this the first time I was, I, I was a teenager. And so like Church is the cat I told you about. He's the one that dies, gets hit by a car and dies first. They find out, uh, Lewis finds out from Judd that there's another cemetery past the pet cemetery. And that pretty much brings back the dead. Um, but they're not the same as they were before, obviously. They're not exactly zombies, they're just evil. <laughs> and I think the more, I guess the more they 
understand reality, the more evil they are. Because, like, the pets that come back aren't, like, they can be brushed off as, you know, yeah, they're acting weird and they smell weird, but, you know, they, they aren't, like, killing anybody. They're not... But church does kill a bunch of other animals. So, you know, you know. So anyway, he Lewis decides in his head that he's going to pick Gage up there. When I read it the first time as a teenager, I do remember reading the parts of the, the dead coming back, like the cat. And anytime the cat was being like starting to be a creep or and like the creepy situations with that cat. And then the, when the, when Gage does come back, like, I remember being terrified at that moment. You know, they, they talk, they talk about Gage, like how he's come, like, Lewis, like, did all this stuff all at night. And so he's, he pretty much passes out. And then his son does come back and is ready to kill right away. And so he finds his dad's scalpel while his dad's still passed out and then goes to take care of business, right? I remember reading that as a teenager, go, a teenager going, um, that's all like being creeped out by all that because the way Stephen King wrote that, it's terrifying. It's very scary. So I remember that. What I didn't remember, and I know I wasn't really concentrated on it, which is why I don't remember, is the, the thought process of the father. The idea that he wanted to unbury his child and then take you know, his body and drive him all the way back home and take him all the way back to this, this site where he knew he could bury him again and him come back. Like the whole time this is happening, he's keeping himself crazy. Like there was moments where it like sneaks in a little bit like, we shouldn't be doing this or this was a sign not to do it or uh, you probably shouldn't do that or oh the, the, the cemetery's locked so let's let's move on like and he like talk, immediately talks himself out of it that the, you know that let's continue being insane kind of attitude and reading that was just it was it was something else man and I know I didn't experience this last time reading his thought process and reading him talking himself into this stuff and saying how, oh, and see, that's another thing, like, he talks about, like, okay, well, if he does come back, because Judd's already kind of got the idea that he wants to do this, and he's like, don't do this, and let me explain why. You know, he's t he's pretty much talking himself into it when he does, you know, when he's, as he's doing these, the the step-by-step -step stuff to get to Gage coming back to him, he's telling himself, oh, well, if, if he comes back and he is evil in in some sort of way and he's not just slow or he's not you know um i'll just you know i'll just i'll just kill him again <laughs> i was just like g g really you almost didn't make it through the first time you weren't the one that killed him like <laughs> you really want to you want to chance that like reading that kind of stuff and reading it from a father's point of view, I can't explain how you feel when you're reading that. Because it's just, it gets you, man. It gets you. It's, it's good stuff, let me tell you. And, you know, in the very end where he's, like, trying to shoe his family away so he can do it. Like, Ellie is, she's, like, falls asleep and she has these dreams, but they're, like, warnings, okay? And so she's, like, trying to get her parents to listen to her and understand that, that everything that's happening right now is a bad idea. <laughs> and she's trying to rescue her dad, and she's trying to rescue the family, and just watching Ellie go through what she goes through, it's just heartbreaking. It is so heartbreaking. And then, you know, Rachel, the mother, is, you know, actually listening to her daughter. And you want, you cheer her on, like, yes, mom is taking her daughter seriously. Even though, because, you know, those, those parents are like, oh, she's a five-year-old. She has no idea what she's talking about. Shh, be quiet. But her mother was being a good mom. And she's like, you know what? My daughter is making really good points. She's saying things that she would never know unless this is actually happening I need to go home and I need to figure this crap out I'm gonna do that for you baby girl and so like that was like a cheering on moment and, and then things just go south so fast and you're just like 
It's just so sad. Ugh. So anyway. <laughs> the creep factor is there. The... We're done with spoilers. <laughs> so the creep factor is there. The scary is there. The grief is there. The heartbreaking, breath-stealing moment. So it's there. Everything is there. This book has it all. And if you read this and you don't see that, I can't help you in life because <laughs> this is a fantastic book. Five stars easily. And I'm going to watch the movie now real soon. And I am I know for a fact it's not going to live up to the movie. I just know that. Okay. But I still want to watch it. So here we go.